ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Unarmored Talk Podcast. And I am your host, Mario P. Fields. And we have an amazing guest today. His name is Michael Sugru. He is a military veteran, a retired law enforcement professional, and a most recent author. But before we get into it, first of all, Mike, what's going on? You mind if I call you Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Nice, my friend. But before we get into this amazing guest who's re- willing to remove his armor to help other people develop a accurate way of thinking, I want to thank you all. You guys, you know, every episode, every couple of weeks, you guys get to hear me or see me, depending on what choice <laughs> you use to get a little taste of Mario P. But thank you. We are just conti- we continue to grow in cities across the world and territories and countries. You guys keep watching the videos on the YouTube channel and subscribing. The subscribership just keeps going up. Can't do it without you guys. Again, I will thank you every episode until you tell me to stop. Robert and Miriam Norris, they sponsor this episode, but they're more than just a sponsor, guys. Check them out. TakeChargeYourHealth.usana.com. Again, even Michael said, Mario, you look pretty young. Hey, I got to give at least some percentage <laughs> to, to my coach, Robert Aberio of the Minerals, the Cell Centros. Guys, get some if you can. Even though they're the sponsor, even if they weren't sponsoring it, I'd still be taking them. <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, last but not least, again, thank you all again. Not even last but not least, I can't thank you enough. This podcast is doing amazing, and it's because of you all. Enough. From Mario P. Fields, your host, let's get to why we all are here today. Michael, talk to us, my friend. Welcome. What's going on? Man, I'm still five foot two and a half and shrinking. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing good. Enjoying the weather out here in California. So Cal, you in SoCal, man? Uh, Northern California, actually, just uh, north of San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, yeah. Wow. Still, still beautiful country. You know, I just came from there and and my, my pockets didn't like it. But other than that, man, I enjoyed the heck out of California, my friend. Yeah, um, it is expensive, but the weather, the geography, the people, they're all great. I hey, I enjoyed it, man. Well, hey, let's jump right into the topic. But before we do that, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. I try to keep it as short as possible, but I'm actually originally from the Bay Area here in Northern California. Wow. Was raised up. My parents got divorced when I was eight. And that's when a critical thing happened. My stepfather, he came into my life and he was in law enforcement. And Mm. actually at that age is where I got the first bug to pursue a career in law enforcement. I was actually a police volunteer, if you can believe it, for the Sausalito Police Department at eight years old. Wow. I know, right? And like, man, I had a laminated ID card. I was (laughs) riding the the parade with McGruff. And uh, that's just where I saw the family, the camaraderie. And I, and I saw that this is something I want to be part of. Right. And so I, I carried that on. In high school, I was a police explorer for the Richmond Police Department, which is also here in the Bay Area, a very dangerous city. Um, my father had changed agencies. And I already decided that, you know what, I was going to set myself up, start studying criminal justice. I was going to go to college. Uh, my original plan was I wanted to go in the FBI. So I knew with that being said, I needed more than just a degree. So I decided to actually pursue a scholarship through the Air Force, and I got a full scholarship to California State Sacramento University. Nice. Majored in criminal justice, and when I graduated in 98, I got commissioned as a butter bar or a second lieutenant in the Air Force, and I got security security forces, which was my first choice, and that's basically military police, you know, anti-terrorism, force protection, air-based ground defense. And I did that. My goal was to do four years, but things happened. Things changed. I got offered Germany. And so I was over there. I extended. And that's when 9-11 happened. Mm. Short time later, I was in the Middle East. And I ended up staying six and a half years active duty. And, and thankfully, my last duty assignment was back here in California at Travis Air Force Base. Nice. And I started transitioning out, started applying to law enforcement agencies, and I got hired. Um, literally, while I was still on user lose, so I was still technically in the Air Force, and I started the police academy, graduated December 2004, and that's where my civilian career took off. And I worked for a city called Walnut Creek, which is about 15 minutes outside Oakland, California, or about 20 minutes outside San Francisco. Nice city in the burbs, you know, pretty upscale. Um, 
went through the ranks. I was an FTO within a year and a half, field training officer. Mm-hmm. Eventually was a detective. I was undercover on a state drug task force and eventually was promoted eight years on as a patrol sergeant. And that's literally where my whole life changed. Uh, two weeks into my patrol sergeant duties on my second solo shift, I was involved in a fatal shooting mm. where literally a man with a butcher knife was trying to kill a couple and try to kill myself and my partners. And that incident literally forever changed me. It changed my path. Eventually, I medically retired in 2018 for post-traumatic stress injury, what I like to call it, PTSI. Oh, yeah. And uh, now I'm on this mission of literally trying to smash the stigma of talking about this stuff, about mental health, talking about feelings, you know, talking about the fact that we need help at times. Yeah. And that's truly my mission is trying to save lives and trying to educate people, not just military and law enforcement, but literally showing the entire world, you know, people on the streets who we are and that we're human and that we have feelings. We have issues just like everybody else. Right. No. And I, I appreciate it. And what an amazing journey, you, you, you know, from the, the turbulence of the marriage falling apart with mom and dad, you, you, you're right, which that's very, very turbulent uh, to, to now you're eight years old and, and you're, you know, you're in the parade as a, as a little baby, baby law enforcement <laughs> officer. You know what I mean? I mean, if you was Mario, he's probably about three foot five, but, but you, you know, and, and then and you have just this, this amazing journey in the Air Force. And, and of course, you're, you're doing great um, as, a, as a law enforcement officer until this, uh, this fateful day when unfortunate loss of any life um, is tragic. But you had to do what you had to do. But let's, let's talk about all of these successes. And from my basic understanding, uh, you were married before, Mike. And... Um, and, 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 and so now you are out there doing all of these things. What happened to your marriage during all of this? You know, let, let's start in the beginning. Um, yeah. I actually met her when I was stationed in Wyoming. Mm. And she was actually going to University of California, Davis. She was a little bit younger. And, man, we just hit it off right away. But <laughs> what happened was I actually – she was supposed to come out and visit me, but I got orders to Germany. And so we literally just cut it off. We didn't talk for a couple of years. Wow. And I know. Right. And then, you know, I mean, everything happens for a reason. And eventually when I came back, we kind of crossed paths again because we had mutual friends and we were both single and whatnot. So we decided, you know, start talking, see where things were at. And um, she we actually started dating while I was still in the Air Force. So my last year when I was a captain, I was a Raven. I was here at Travis, right. you know, Chief security forces. And so literally when our relationship started, I was already in the military. And even back then, I made, I made some mistakes, okay, that carried on into my – Say, I mean, say it. I'm, so. Yeah, I'm just going to follow my sword. So I made, I made a lot of mistakes. But right. one of the first mistakes I made for both the military and the law enforcement side on the civilian mm. side yeah. was that I was – I told myself I'm not going to share the job. I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm not mm. going to talk about work. I'm not going to bring her into that fold because I thought, honestly, at the time, I was protecting her. And so I believe that if I kept my professional life separate from my personal life, right. that would be good and that would be healthy. Now, now I know that today, that's one of the worst things I could have done because that broke down our communication. You know, that broke down the fact that I didn't go to her yeah. when I was experiencing tough times, when I was dealing with stressful or traumatic situations, which on the civilian side, I was dealing with that every single day. You know, so when I would come home in a bad mood or pissed off, she thought it was her. And, and why wouldn't she? Because I didn't tell her it was the job. I didn't tell her about the fact that I went to a, a fatal car accident that day right. or that I had to pull my gun out and I almost took a life that day. You know, things like this. I didn't share it. And so I literally thought I was protecting her, but I wasn't. What I was doing is I was pushing her away. Yeah. And slowly, you- slowly and surely, I was just pushing her away. And, and I like how you talked and, and discussed about how you believed, you know, your belief was that if you choose to do this, right, if you choose to, to, to practice these behaviors, it's going to make things bad, better and reflecting. It, 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 it made things worse. And you mentioned communication. And I, th- I think that's a critical component, it's an essential element of any healthy relationship to a marriage. And, and here you are doing things that actually started to fracture a fracture that at what point 
did you start to realize, wait a minute, you're right. We, we are further apart than we are together. And maybe it's because I'm, I'm separating work from home. Well, you know, I got to add to that though, too, because yeah. I also placed a priority on my career. You know, I've always uh, been very career driven since I was a child. I mean, I'm one of those guys that had my entire life planned out. I had my goals, the things that I was achieving, you know, the ranks that I wanted to get. I wanted to be chief of police someday. And so the other big mistake was that I always wanted to work graveyard shift. You know, I wanted to work the night shift. And so yeah. most of the time, you know, most of the time I'm not home at night. And eventually we had a beautiful baby girl. And so my wife is raising our daughter essentially, you know, by herself, right. like 75% of the time. And the other 25% of the time when I'm actually awake and I'm home, it's like I wasn't present. I was physically here, but I wasn't mentally here. And so, you know, I, and I didn't realize, you know, she's working full time. She's doing all these things at home. Yeah. And I didn't appreciate that. I truly didn't understand all that she was doing. And ironically enough, you know, I didn't find out about it until we got separated. And then all of a sudden I had to jump in as a father because I had my daughter half the time by myself. Right. And now though, I look at it and what a blessing, because that made me much closer to my daughter. That made me a much better man, a much better father. And it gave me appreciation for those years that I just didn't appreciate it. I really took all of that for granted because, you know, I'm at work, I'm doing my thing. And when I get home, you know, things should be squared away and things are taken care of. And that was my mentality, you know, and it, it really wasn't a true team. That's yeah. not how it was. And that's how it needs to be. It needs to be a team. It needs to be where everybody's pushing their weight. Everyone's helping each other out. Everyone's carrying their load. And I was carrying my load at work, but I was not carrying my load at home. Yeah. And I, and I like, no, thanks, Mike. And I like how you mentioned it. It was a choice. You know, like you said, you chose uh, to prioritize your career. Um, you, you know, you, those were choices, though. Those weren't uh, in, in a reaction, right? An emotional reaction. And, and, and I believe that we have a lot of listeners and viewers on, on, on Armor Talk podcast that may not even realize, like you said, they might, may not even realize that their priorities is their priority. It is not mutually supporting whoever's in their relationship or nor have they even asked, you know, how, do you, how do you feel about me realistic or taking this promotion to, uh, you know, to Northern Europe or somewhere? And uh, and then I love how you say, look, looking back, you know, it was a crisis moment, but it created an opportunity for you to improve, um, you know, as a father. Can you talk about one or two things that you did improve upon when that happened? You know, the thing was, is like, I just truly appreciated the time with my daughter, yeah. like the simple things. Like, I mean, mm. things like, you know, giving her a bath like helping her with homework, you know, taking her to school, going shopping with her, you know, for whether it's clothes or food, these basic everyday things that we do, but it just, you know, gave me this appreciation. I was scared. I, I'll be honest with you. I was scared. I mean, I, I wasn't scared on the job. I wasn't scared downrange or on the street, but man, that, that first, you know, six months when I remember I, it was my daughter and just me and she was very young at the time. It was like, right. man, you know, like, how am I going to do this? But the thing is, is like, we're all going to step up to it. This is our family. These are our kids. And, and that's what I did is I stepped up and it was uncomfortable at the time. Right. But like, I know today and my, my daughter's getting ready to turn 12 and it's, you know, that pivotal yeah. age. Yeah. But we are so close and we are so tight because I was there and I'm there today. And that's the thing is I see so many military and law enforcement professionals who are not there. Right. They're, they're at work, they're being deployed, they're downrange, you know, like you said, you know, volunteering for these deployments that necessarily you don't have to go on. Or like in my case, I sought out an undercover position on a state drug task force, right? You know, and you want to think about like, for me, that's exciting. Right. But for her, it's yeah. like, could you, could you imagine your spouse is in one of the most dangerous positions you can be in right. and she's at home at night by herself? probably worried about what I'm doing, what I'm getting into, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about crushing crime and knocking down doors and putting people in, in prison. I mean, that's the honest truth back then. 
Right. Yeah. No. Right. And and, and like you said, you're having fun. You, exactly. You know, you're, you're having fun, but but she's she's at home, stressed out, worried, not sleeping. I mean, you know who who knows. And um, and I, I like how you highlighted the the essentials of life. You know, you know it the the turbulent moment made you stop and realize. I'm not scared of kicking in a door. I am not scared of jumping on a grenade. I'm scared of this six six year old. <laughs> what, yes. what do I do? What? What? Wait a minute. Okay, how do you do your hair? Okay. Oh my! Oh, don't even get me started because that was one of the most stressful things there ever was. Is trying to get her hair done before <laughs> school in the morning. I mean, and any dad out there knows what I'm talking about. If you had to do the hair and as, oh my gosh, as it's growing and where do you put the clips and the braids or the braid? Oh my man. I mean, it, that was stressful. Absolutely. <laughs> Mike, this is, this is cool. What ladies and gentlemen, Mike, Mike is on his uh, a tour right now. He just, you know, congrats, just released a book. And so I'm not going to hold you too much because this was amazing. Can you quickly talk about your book? Let the audience know how can they get a copy of it and what's it about? Absolutely. So the name of the book is Relentless Courage, Winning the Battle Against Frontline Trauma. Now, the key thing about this book is, and I want to recognize Dr. Shauna Springer, also known as Doc Springer, and she is a clinical psychologist. She's worked with combat veterans and first responders most of her career. So she is a, a truly trauma-informed, culturally competent clinician. And this book happened because of her. And she is my co-author. And so this, this book is very unique. There's, to my knowledge, there's not anything like this out there. And to kind of give you a brief synopsis is there's about 15 chapters. Every chapter is split into two distinct parts. The first part of every chapter is my story told in my voice going all the way back to childhood wow. until current day right now. And the second part of every chapter Dr. Shauna Springer breaks it down, explains everything in a global sense so that anybody on the street is going to understand what exactly our service members, our first responders, our dispatchers, our firefighters, our cops, our paramedics, the things that we're seeing and dealing with on a daily basis. But right. more importantly, the toll that that's taking on our physical health, our mental health, yeah. and it's truly showing the human side behind the badge, behind the uniform. And the thing about this book was the first purpose of it was to address the suicide epidemic among military members and first responders. Because the simple fact is that we are much more likely to die by our own hands right. than the hands of another. That is a fact, a fact. Yeah. But the beautiful thing that came out of this book was the understanding on the other side of it from just people on the street. And, and I got to tell you a quick story. So I, I work out every single day as part of my post-traumatic stress recovery. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of gentlemen in there who we'd seen each other for a couple of years. They didn't know who I was. I didn't know who they were. We would nod our heads and just wave to each other. And one day I stop and talk to them. And I knew that these gentlemen had some bad personal experiences with law enforcement, right. not because they did anything wrong, but because of the realities of how some people are treated out there. And I said, look, you know, I said, look, we've been talking, we've waved to each other. You don't know me. I don't know you, but I want you to get to know me and I want to get to know you. And so I told him a brief background about me. I told him about this book and I said, I want you to read it. And I want your no holds barred, honest opinion of what you think. We're going to meet for lunch after you read this book and we're going to talk about it. And I want to know exactly how you feel about it. All three of them, we ended up meeting for lunch. It changed their entire perspective on law enforcement specifically. Right. Right. That's that's powerful. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Get get a copy. Uh, I, you know, I'm retired. I'm not on active duty, so I can't give no one orders. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just Mario P. Fields, but uh, but uh hey, get a copy, relentless courage, truly appreciate it. Thank you to your co-author, by the way. Uh, you know, please give her my regards uh, next time you talk to her. And ladies and gentlemen, you guys heard it from Michael. I mean, he gave some some accurate, accurate, um, you know, tips on on what happened when the things you think are very challenging may not be as challenging as you think. And you, you guys heard what happened and how he chose.
to prioritize things without discussing it with his better half. But it was a blessing because it made him realize the smaller things in life. Literally, his young daughter, who's 12 today, you know, right? You know, she's 12 years old, but uh, made him realize there's some there's some finer things in life that you need to focus on and continue to have a healthy relationship and also be a health, healthy person. Remove your armor. Don't keep the stuff in. Michael, any last advice you can leave the listeners and viewers, my friend? Absolutely. I just want people out there, you know, if you're suffering in silence, if you got things going on, you know, know that there's help, know that there's hope. You know, I suffered in silence for almost four years and it almost cost my life to the point where I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. But I am living proof that you can come out the other side of this. And, and the beautiful thing, you've already mentioned it, but I used to be a very rigid person and I used to look at things in just one way. And today mm -hmm. I appreciate life every single day and i have a better life today than i've ever had so just know that there is help and there is hope all you got to do is get the strength and courage to ask for it and i appreciate you have a new fan here mario p fields in the fields family and we appreciate everything you be safe out there good luck on your tour again and appreciate you coming on, on armor talk podcast mike thanks for your service too my friend Thank you very much. And thank you for your service, brother. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it for this, this episode. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. But be safe out there and God bless. See you later.